Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about software engineering salaries, as in how much do software engineers typically earn? One of the most common questions that I get in my Instagram as a DM or on LinkedIn is how much can they expect to earn? These are especially questions from uh, younger students or professionals that are just starting their career that are curious about what salaries and benefits uh, they can expect. So I hope that I can answer some of those questions for you in this video and I'll share some tools that you can use to kind of gauge how much you should be making as well. If you're watching my videos, if you like my content, if you're still not subscribed, please do so that I can at least get the ability to engage with you guys and make content that you guys want to watch. So without wasting any more time, let's talk about software engineering salaries. So the first thing I want to talk about is related to my own salary, because a lot of times the questions that I get on Instagram is, hey, I'm curious how much you make while that's cool and all, but I don't think knowing any individual person's salary is going to be beneficial for anybody. And one of my favorite managers once told me, every time two people talk about compensation, one of them walks away disappointed, right? Uh, I hope that makes sense. Because salaries generally, uh, or, or a compensation package in general, depends on a plethora of things, right? Your years of experience, your performance, how fast you're getting promoted, how slow you're getting promoted, how many years you've been in a specific specific position, what kind of special skill sets do you have? Is it a rare skills like machine learning you have? Do you have a PhD? Um, you know, like, I mean, the list can go on. So to kind of know one individual or two individual salary and then kind of base your expectations based on that will lead in disappointment. Instead, what I would love to encourage you guys to do is have a basic understanding of what ranges uh, not only software engineers, but even accounting or, or finance or product management, what, what range can you expect? What is the average where most engineering salaries fall under? So that is much more beneficial for you to go and then see, hey, okay, this is what range I can expect. So if I have a little bit more experience than the average range, then I can expect a little bit more. Or if I like rocked my interview, I can probably negotiate a little bit more. Or if you are barely starting or you've switched your career, um, or if you don't have enough experience or a lot of gaps due to unforeseen reason uh, in your uh, career, then you can be like, okay, maybe I can expect the lower end of the salary, right? Or if you think like you're like an exceptional, you know, like outlier, then you can look at those kind of cases that will be like a few dots in either extremes where, you know, someone is making some ridiculous amount of money. But I, I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and one of the tools that I like to use is called levels.fyi. And I, I think there are a few videos in YouTube already about it, but I thought, why not? I'll, I'll explain it to you because I get, I get a lot of questions regarding this. Levels.fyi is sort of an aggregate of uh, validated real um, salaries from all over the world in different fields and from different companies, right? So I could go and go to levels.fyi, I'll, I'll enter my compensation, it's all anonymous, and they curate that and they have a lot of uh, algorithms that run and analyze the data so they can figure out, so if I go and enter like, I make five million dollars a year right like they know that that that's not true so it'll get rejected so you can't just like fluke the system and, and based on my experience and all the compensation packages that i have seen i think it's fairly accurate what they have in the website so i'm going to switch over to my webcam over there and i'll walk you through how you can use levels.fyi to get insights into uh, compensation benefits salaries different levels in different companies that kind of stuff and I hope that that will be much more useful to you than knowing my salary or X person's salary or Y person's salary. Uh, so let's let's go ahead. All right guys, so this is levels.fyi. Two cool things um, this website has is, one is you can look at levels for different companies, right? Like for example, Microsoft has entry level is 59, you can go all the way to level 80, which is a technical fellow. Uh, and you can look, look at that across multiple companies. And then the other thing you can look at is for a particular band, say like say 64 uh, senior software engineer at Microsoft, you can look at the average midpoint of the salaries, right? Like, so this is what they kind of think is a good salary, but you can go uh, look at the full details. And as you can see, there's a salary range, right? And that's why I also mentioned that looking at individual salaries or, hey, this person makes that much, isn't that useful because their circumstances can be totally different than yours or, 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 or average software engineer, right? Like for example here, you see that the general range kind of hovers around here, right? Like so 
from the low point, you're looking at around, say, 200,000 a year in total comp. And then on the higher end, you'll see around 265. So if you're ever looking to get a job, that's like sort of your ballpark for what you should expect. Salaries can uh, deviate based on your years of experience, how you did in your interviews. Maybe you have a specific skill set that others don't have. Like a lot of different things go into it. So just having one data point about, hey, I sh this person makes this much salary and I should expect the same is is not accurate. And, and that would be, uh, you'd get disappointed that way. So if you have a good range, then you can base your expectations according to that. But like to, to make my point clear, so this person has seven years of experience um, and they're level 64 and their total comp is around $250,000. That seems, that seems in line. So like, but if I look at it, this person has 21 years of experience, but they're still 64. They're making around 500, right? Like that's a lot of experience. Like some people are not even 21 years old that work at Microsoft, right? Like, so it depends. So if you just ask someone, oh, how much does senior software engineer make? It, it could be anything. And then in the lower end, you could see even $120,000, right? And of course that's from a different country. These are from different countries. So uh, as you can see, like say, if you're looking from India, you can just like filter in that and then see what's the ballpark, right? Or if you're looking in Seattle, you can see filter that and then you can kind of see what's the ballpark. Um, that's one. And not only that, you can also look at benefits. And this is pretty accurate and verified, you know, childcare, custom workstation, free drinks, gym, HSA, leaves and stuff like that, you know. So that's pretty useful, especially if you're curious about, you know, like multiple companies that you want to join, you want to compare them. I think this is a good uh, review of, of course, like eventually, like I always say, you don't want to make new, uh, benefits or uh, salary the only metric that you look to join a company. The, there are many other things why uh, joining something is very exciting. I and mean, hopefully it's the team project. Um, that comes or just the company in general comes before your compensation but i understand uh, compensation is also a big uh, big factor you know so that's that's that but if you go back to levels here so what you can do for example say you're you're here and you're curious about how these compare to like facebook or google right um, so like you can click them and it'll show you the levels so a senior at microsoft would be e5 at Facebook or L5 at Google, right? Then you can see like what's an E5 at Facebook. So then that's the detail over there. Then you can look at distribution, sort of what, how many years of experience is expected, you know, like that kind of stuff, benefits, you know. So I think this is way more useful than knowing some individual salary, you know. Um, that's because a lot of, like I said, a lot of things uh, make up a compensation, you know, so just knowing of the ballpark of where you should uh, be and, you know, of course, uh, know that years of experience, individual skills, performance, all that matters, you know, um, but it's just not for top tech companies. There's a lot of companies here that you can look for, you know, and it's not just software engineering. You can go software engineering manager, data scientist, product designer, product manager, um, you know, and a lot of other fields. Like usually another one is like PM roles, right? Like, so how does PM distribute over? So let's look at Facebook PM versus Amazon PM, right? Like, so product manager. So it looks like the entry level is L5 at Amazon. So what's that's the compensation over here, you know? So you can also see like different kinds of things like what's the general salary caps and stuff like that. I know Amazon has a hard salary cap of I think like 165,000, like nobody, even like the VPs don't make more than 165,000 in, in cash, right? Everything else is based on stock. So you learn those kind of things. There are a lot of other companies. So like, for example, Netflix is known to have only senior software engineers. There's no other role, right? Like, so you can, see things like that for example here here if you look at netflix you see everything is only senior software engineer and they're also known to pay like pretty well you see um so you can you can find those information you know do your research uh, get get an idea so yeah i wanted to quickly share that because like i said the most common question i get in my instagram dm is how much i make and i wanted to explain uh, well answer that question but not in terms of my own competition because that's again like i said that's irrelevant right like it doesn't really help anybody um but in in something like this would be a lot more useful if you're 
looking to get a job or if you just want to know how like you know you're maybe you're working in one of the companies that are comparable to these companies but um, the, the data for that company isn't here so you can maybe compare and see hey how should how much should I be making you know like um, I think that's fair but yep hope you enjoyed this video and hope this was helpful mm -hmm.